Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Wednesday, June 22nd, 2022. The S&P basically had a zero sum gain today. And what I mean by that is that it basically fell overnight, rallied today, moved to a new high, tested that resistance at 3,800, failed on both fronts, came back down to basically finishing the day lower. And so it was a zero sum gain. Now, it actually leaves us in pretty much the same position as we were yesterday afternoon after the close in that the market is sitting on a daily right at the four. And it went up and it gave a test to the eight as well as that resistance at 3801. And then the four, uh, excuse me, the eight held and now is dropping along with the failure in the market, brought the eight down even lower, the 50, the, all of them still pointing down. So the picture has not changed. And I continue to view this as a minute fourth wave. That minute fourth wave may be complete at today's high. Dropping down to the hourly chart. It's like Jeopardy. Here we go. And we open that up. There's the high, boom, boom, failure. In fact, the nice failure right off the bat. Here we are again, the hourly 200. Yesterday came up above it, failed. This was today, excuse me, came up above it, failed. Had a stronger rally, came above it, got all the way up to that resistance, failed. And then failed. So, and that failure then started to bring us back below where we're resting on the hourly 20. Both the NASDAQ and the S&P really in the exact same position. Failed to the upside twice, sitting at the 20. A break below the 20 suggests we go to the 50, 37.42. A break there brings support on the 37.06. 3703, 36.93. But unlike yesterday, or overnight, I should say, that break of 3,700 was not strong enough to, or convincing enough, obviously, that the market was going to continue lower back down to 36.61, down to 36.39, and on lower as the minute fifth wave picked up some steam. No, it held, kept the pattern, and roared up and moved to a new high. So it's still within this minute fourth wave counter trend corrective move. And whether this all turns into A, this is the B, and now we're in the C, which we discussed on yesterday's update, and now we're looking at it in today. Is it done? I don't know. We're sitting right there at the 20. They're not budging off of it. They're not really moving it back above. So now we're stuck between the eight and four, which are piggyback right here at 63, down to 53. We got a 10 point range here and they're not moving anywhere. And that could just stay right, right there. And then we're gonna produce another one of these again tomorrow, possibly. Again, Several of the tech titan stocks remain in play. Again, we're working towards a Friday expiration. I have no idea how much might have been left over from last Friday, the great big mighty quarterly expiration that got thrown into this Friday for expiration on Friday. I don't know. Possibilities abound. So again, we're playing into the Friday expiration. So it's where a lot of these Titans, a lot of these larger held stocks want to be for that expiration. So right now, we have to continue with at least a 50-50 probability that we're going to go up, we're going to go down. If we go up, we have the same ticket. We got the 200, the hourly 200 at 37.93. Then we still have that resistance at 3,800. 
a break there really just brings up resistance about 3840. But first, before we get there, we have 3833, but actually if I bring it down, we got 3823, 33, and 43. Those are all price extremes, except for the 23, which is the bar itself. And that's where I would expect they're gonna go give it a retest. If it gets above it, for whatever reason, then we're looking like it's going to start pushing to 38.70 to 39. Now, why? I couldn't give you a reason. More buyers and sellers? Possibly. But here we have the daily 20 as of 38.91. So a break above all of this pushes it to there, 38.91. And that's how I use my moving averages, at least on the daily. That's what the expectation would be. I will can put together fibs, which would point to some levels as well. But right now, I got to wait and see what the market wants to tell me. Right now, it's not telling me much. So downside, same story. The market needs to break below the 20. The market needs to break below the 50. The market needs to break below 3707, 3, 3693, 3661, and then 3639 before we start. Come on. 3491 to 35, I believe 06 or 10, somewhere in there. That's the zone. 35, I'm going to call it 3505 down to 3491. That's the zone where I think that this minute five will complete. If, if it blasts through there, then yes, we still continue to have more, but we stop dropping, we start dropping into support black holes. Does not exist. It does we go back far enough? But the Fibonacci would then suggest 3,200 to 3,180. And that would be an additional strong drop. Can that happen? Sure. It can. But I'm not necessarily looking for it because I want to see what this fifth wave is going to look like. What's it, what's it, how is it going to present itself? Yes, fifth waves can be nasty. They can be very strong down moves. And they can be fast. We're not there yet. We're still sitting in this play ground and decisions need to be made, but I, they don't listen. So I can't make it. So we got to wait for the market to tell us. So those are the two scenarios that basically remain the same. Continue to use the moving averages. They were nice moves today. And if you take this down to a five minute chart and you open it up, you'll see how all the moving averages were clustered together, similar to even on the hourly chart, that when it broke, it was a buy. And sometimes you just got to do it. You just got to buy on watching to see what happened. Broke the 20, broke the 50, all at once. Boom, boom, buy it. And that's what happens. Because the normal reaction for doing that on an hourly chart would be, that's the double boost. You're going to get a lot of pressure coming in behind it of, Oh, I'll buy. Oh, I'll buy. I'll buy. And you see what it did. So if you manage to get in somewhere around, come on, 37, 35, I'm going to say, it got you up to 97. So you know, you're talking about a $60 trade, 60 S&P dollars at 50 bucks per. So one lot. Very nice. Easy to pick up your thousand bucks right there. First thing in the morning. Boom. There's the opening. There's the next, the next half hour. Boom. You go. Anyway, plenty to do. These were nice trades as well. So again, tomorrow, allow the market to tell us, follow the moving averages, use them all the way down your charts. On, on, a, on a one, a two, a five, a 15, a 30, they all come into play. All right, I'm going to leave it right there. Our next update will be on Thursday, the 23rd.